the infamous Joel here. It's been a little while. It's been a few days, weeks. It's been a long time. How are you doing? How's the infamous mob doing? I'm about to change the name of the group. I'm doing a lot of things. I posted <clears throat> the other day. I think it was yesterday that I was retiring for good. And some of you showed some concern. And I appreciate you that, that showed concern. They acted like you cared. It's like, okay, people actually care. That's good. That's always a good feeling that people actually give a crap about you, right? So... Uh, for those of you who were a little curious and a little, uh, you know, a little messed up about that, what I meant by I'm retiring for good. And like, oh my God, what is he doing? Is he just going to not show up in the group anymore? Is he just going to, you know, sail off on the beach somewhere? What is he going to do? All right. A lot of you were a little confused. So this is what I'm planning. All right. Some of you have been following me for a long, long time. And I appreciate you. You guys are the original infamous mobsters. Give me a hashtag mob in the comment section if you've been following me and following this group, following this movement, following the make your boss hate me because I show you how to live a life of freedom, passion, and fulfillment. Remember that back in the day, right? I want to free as many people from the nine to five grind as possible. That's my goal. That's the goal of the infamous mob. And we do things our own way. We don't care what people think. We don't care if people judge us right? We don't care about any of that. We want to live this whole different lifestyle. We want to separate ourselves from society and say, listen, I, your way is fine. It's not for me. I want to do things my own way. That's the infamous mob way. All right. So with that being said, give me the hashtag live hashtag replay down in the comment section below. Let me know when you're watching this. And right now I can't see anybody's comments. I don't know why the stupid phone, something Facebook. I don't know. It's usually one or the other. So what am I making this little live for? And what am I planning on doing? Let me get both of those things out of the way in which order I'm not sure yet. Let me say, uh, first of all, what am I doing? Why did I say I was retiring? So here's the thing. When I was running my affiliate marketing business, when I first came home with nothing but $50 in my pocket, and I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? I started learning about this stuff called affiliate marketing, where you could actually make money promoting other people's stuff, proven products. doesn't matter what it is. You like Jordans, like Nikes, like Reeboks, like iPhones like TVs, like whatever the hell it is that you like, guess what? You could actually be an affiliate for that product or service and promote it for a commission and sell it for a commission. Anybody and everybody on the planet can do that. You don't need to be anybody special. So I said, oh my God, I need to get into that because I got multiple felonies. I got, you know, no high school diploma. I got nothing to my name. So I might as well jump into this thing and see if I can succeed at it. And guess what? I did. Within less than a year's time, I hit six figures. So after that, I started saying to myself, hmm, what's the next step for me? It kind of got boring. It kind of got complacent. I'm not going to lie. It just it kind of did. It wore on me. It was like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Let me see what else I can do. I started serving coaches. And a lot of you in here are the coaches that I started serving. Changed the name of the group to Coaching Evolution. I myself was a coach when I was in affiliate marketing. I was helping people learn affiliate marketing. So I said, all right, that's the next step for me. I'm going to be a coach. I'm going to be a coach that helps coaches. Right? And since I've done that, I've enjoyed my time. I've built a great relationship with a lot of you coaches out there. We've we've done a lot. We've uh, helped a lot of coaches succeed, get off the ground. Some of them are still in some of the programs on the back end that I have going on. You guys are doing great. Testimonials, all that good stuff. All right, great. But now I'm kind of still in that affiliate world. I still have my heart and everything set on helping these people who are working the nine to five grind, people who have like kind of a shady past like I had, and people who are still coming to me and saying, I want to fire my boss. I want to become financially free. I want to do this and that. And I feel like split. Right? I feel like, well, I want to serve them and I want to serve the coaches, but I got to pick one or the other, right? Because I'm only one person. I can't clone myself, right? So I ultimately said, you know what? I think my heart and my soul and my everything is really with the kind of people, not really just like the, the mechanism doesn't matter. Affiliate marketing, coaching, whether you decide to stay in this group or not, they both do the, they're both the same skill sets you're going to need. You're going to need marketing, you're going to need sales, you're going to need branding, you're going to need storytelling, you're going to need all that stuff. And you're still going to get it out of this group. I'm still going to go live. I'm still going to do trainings. If you want to learn some of these techniques and some of these methods, I'm still going to be here giving it to you, whether it is your coach or you're an affiliate marketer. It doesn't matter. But I think the kind of people that I feel most rewarded helping is the kind of people who are like me. And today, I had a lead, a lead, a friend, whatever you want to call these kind of people who are potentially thinking about joining the group. We were talking in Messenger. 
And I don't mention names. I don't put anybody on blast out here. But it was a nice young lady. And she was telling me that the position that she's in and the reason she's getting into affiliate marketing is because she wants to spend more time at home with her husband and her kids. There's a lot of stress there. I didn't go so deep into it. I don't put, a, put her business out there. But um, the thing is, her husband and her kids don't really understand her business and what's going on in her head and what she's really trying to do. They're making her feel like she's crazy, right? They're telling her like, she said her husband is always telling her like, how's that computer thing going, right? He's like real sarcastic. How's that computer thing that you're doing going? And as affiliate marketers, if you started off in affiliate marketing, you're doing successful now, intermediate, beginner, I don't know where you're at. You've already, you already know where this story is going. In the beginning of affiliate marketing, it's really confusing. There's a lot of information out there. You don't really, really know where to get started, what to do. So in the beginning, you don't make a lot of money because you're confused. You don't know, you don't know how to get started. There's so much going on. It's a whole new world. This becoming self-employed, working from home. It's like, oh my God, there's so much to do. There's so much information. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. How do I actually make the money? There's so much going on. So she's having her husband tell her, how's that computer thing going? And that's demoralizing. That makes her feel like, man, am I ever going to make this work? And let me tell you something. When I first came home in 2019, when I first came home from prison, and a lot of you don't know, I spent time in prison. I spent about seven years locked up. When I first came home, I had $50 to my pocket, $50 to my whole name. Like, that's all I own. My assets were $50, not, you know, not that I have like a house in Virginia, none of that stuff. Okay, I have $50. That's it. I don't have one of those like kind of rags to riches stories. I have a rags to riches story because, you know, sometimes gurus get on here. Kevin David was an accountant and then he became like a guru. It's like, oh, wow. Great. Okay. So <laughs> it's not that much of a jump. I like Kevin David, but what? Uh, okay. Well, you didn't really struggle that much. I came home with $50 in my pocket. Okay. $50. Like I could buy a t-shirt. That's it. All right. So um, I know what it's like. When you're coming from next to nothing or nothing at all, and you're trying something, you're trying something new, you're having hope, you're having faith, you're trying to build something for yourself, you have a vision, you have a dream, you have something you want to accomplish. For me, it was this affiliate marketing thing. I got to get this off the ground. I got to get this passive income. I got to set my kids up for a financially free future. I want to leave something for them. Right? I want to leave something for that. A lot of you of having having the same vision, the same dreams. You're probably thinking 2050, right? Years and years from now. You want your grandkids come to come to you and say, Thank you, grandma. Thank you, grandpa. Because of you, myself and my kids and all future generations are financially secure. Right? You have assets, you have businesses, you have properties, you have all this stuff going on. All because of the work that you put in. You changed your own and all future generations lives. I had those types of dreams, but with $50 in my pocket. So I totally related to this woman because when she said, you know, my husband always tells me, how's that computer thing going? How's that computer thing going? I was kind of mad for her. I'm like, man, I want to punch your husband in the face. Like, <laughs> you know, like that's very like rude. Like somebody in your family has a dream. They're trying to work on something and it, it's life changing, you know, if you're supportive, if you love and you care about that person, you don't say, how's that computer thing going? I know when I first got started, and maybe a lot of you can relate. I came home. I told my mom. I lived with my mom when I came home. And I told her, like, I'm going to start this online business thing. I'm going to do this online business. It's like called affiliate marketing. A lot of you probably told a lot of the same stories, whether you're coaching, whatever you're doing. And I know she was just, she was supportive, but she was, like, confused, Right? A lot of our parents or siblings or whoever came up in the world where you go to school, you work hard, you get a job, you work for someone else, you like grind yourself to the bone till you're 70 and then you retire. All they know is that. So when you try to tell them a story like a different story where you're like, well, you know, instead I want to do this like, you know, have this online business. I'm going to be on this computer. I'm going to type a few things up every day and make these little pages. And I'm going to have a business and uh, I don't want to work, mom. You know, I want to work for myself. I don't want to work for somebody else. She's like, huh, okay, good luck. You know, it's like, you know, and even though she was like trying to be supportive and trying to be there for me and all that good stuff, 
I could tell it was like, eh, you know, it was like, yeah, I believe you. I, I think you're going to do great. But she was still like sliding me like applications from Taco Bell and stuff like here, sign this. Like, <laughs> I know you, I know you're going to be successful in affiliate marketing and everything. I know, but you know, here's a, here's a little application. Just in case you needed like a plan B. I said, no mom, no plan B. I'm blowing, like I'm burning plan B to the ground. Plan A is going to work. That's the only plan that's going to work for me. No plan B. She's like, oh, I know, I know, I know. But just, you know, here, here, Taco Bell is hiring right now. And, (laughs) you know, you have to understand if you have family like that and close people like that, it's very, very difficult for you to succeed. So your new year's resolution, everything that you want to do, If they're dragging you down, if they're putting those little seeds of doubt in your head, they're telling you like, well, you know, McDonald's is hiring or they're telling you, how's that computer thing going? I'm sorry. That's really obnoxious. I really do want to like punch him in the face, but they're telling you things like that. You have to be a really strong willed person to shut that down, especially if they're people that are really close to you and they're saying these obnoxious things. I, you know, kudos. Like I give a lot of like a lot of credit and respect to people that still push through when they have people in the corner doubting them because like that that's just hard that's really really hard if you're one of these people give me a yes in the comment section you're one of these people you have people doubting you in your own corner and you still wake up every morning with the same energy with the same enthusiasm today i'm gonna build my business up more today i'm gonna push hard today i'm gonna do this and this and that If you have the same energy every single day, all credit to you. You're amazing. Seriously. Hashtag mob. You're amazing. Like, that's crazy. I don't think you get enough credit, so I wanted to take this time out to whoever you are. If I'm speaking to you, wow. (laughs) That's amazing, okay? Um, I had really good support for the most part. I mean, my mom was iffy, but I had support. Guys like Tiger, my buddy Tiger Rush, he was supportive. Uh, my buddy, uh, my buddy Rel, he's a real life friend. We were locked up together. He used to help me, uh, run my business class while we were in jail. And he was very supportive, you know, people like that, that support you and are in your corner and they can see your vision and they encourage your vision. There's nothing better than that. There's nothing better than that because when we're in isolation, when we're living on an Island and we're kind of just hoping and praying and dreaming all on our own, it's rough. (laughs) it's hard you have to be a really strong-willed person so if you want to make long story short you want to make your new year's resolution whatever it may be you want to make it work you want to make it succeed look at your circle look at the people in your corner look at the people around you are they encouraging you are they encouraging your dreams are they there to support you are they telling you don't give up are they telling you keep waking up every day and keep doing what you're doing i believe you're gonna make it you know, now my mom like sings my praises. Now my mom is like, she can't wait to talk to family members and like, you see what my son's doing? My son made this. My son's doing this and this. You see them on YouTube? And like, it's... <laughs> but in the beginning, it wasn't like that. All right. It wasn't like that in the beginning. So just to let you know that if you do happen to have those people that throw a little bit of doubt, a little bit of shade, a little bit of something, um, you know, either get rid of them, ignore them, love them from a distance, ignore them. I had to ignore my mom. It's like, yeah, mom, like, you don't know what you're talking about. Love you, but you don't know what you're talking about. But, <laughs> but if you have them people, just know that, you know, one day they might turn around. One day they start seeing that they were wrong and they'll be singing your praises too. But just be mindful of that. Just because they don't think that you're going to succeed or they think that they can't do it. They're projecting their feelings on you. They don't think they can succeed. So in turn, they're putting that energy on you. Just know that that's all it is. Okay. It doesn't matter if they think you're a penguin. (laughs) I had a video about that. It doesn't matter what they think. The only time that it's true is if you believe it's true. Once you start believing, well, maybe they're right. Maybe this isn't going to work out. You're screwed. Don't think that way. Don't think that way. You're going to succeed. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. It just hasn't worked out for you yet. I can't stand people in my corner who say, well, I can't do that. I say, no, no, no. That's not what winners say. Winners say, I can't do that yet. Yet. That is the key word. Change the language. Change the way you think. So that rants over. All right. So thank you guys for coming. And I saw you guys coming, you know, logging on, logging off. I saw a lot of comments. I didn't get to all of them because I was too busy ranting and raving. But that's the angle of the group that I'm going with now. 
I'm going to start serving affiliate marketers yet again. A lot of free stuff coming down the pipeline. A lot of getting you on your feet, getting those passive affiliate sales like I used to help you do. I'm back. All right. So I'm the infamous Joel and I'm out. Happy New Year.